In the fall of 1941, the Japanese Imperial Army set its expansionist gaze on the impregnable British colony of Singapore. It was a key component in Japan's quest for control of the Pacific. For the British, it was a defeat as great as Pearl Harbor. Albert Adams was a private in the British infantry. This is where he met the enemy, on the battlefront. Until late 1941, the British are fighting a war against the Germans at their doorstep. But a new offensive is about to take place at a more distant location in the British Empire. October 1941, Japan completes final preparations for war. A prime objective is Malaya because of its rich natural resources of rubber. But to take Malaya, Japan must also conquer Singapore, the most heavily armed fortress in the world. For more than 100 years, Great Britain has dominated Singapore. British military experts have long believed that any invasion of Singapore would come from the sea. The world's largest fixed long-range guns guard the south, east and west approaches to the island from attack. Army Commander General Sir Arthur Percival anticipates enemy landings at beaches in Siam and Northern Malaya, then a drive down the peninsula to Singapore. To prevent this, the English adopt a new defense plan called Matador, in which British troops would be moved across Siam to defend the beaches against a Japanese invasion force. The British troop movement would require 24 hours. Percival is told to prepare, but receives no orders to move. December 7, 1941, two hours before the attack on Pearl Harbor, the war in the Pacific begins. Japanese troops under the leadership of General Yamashita are to land at the same beaches that Percival wanted to defend in Plan Matador. Three of the toughest divisions in the Imperial Army make up the invasion force. The 25th Army that invaded Singapore was one of the best trained uh, forces that the Japanese Army had. They'd been trained in jungle warfare, they'd prepared for this, they'd even done something unusual for an army certainly, uh, to rehearse amphibious landings. So this was a crack force. One landing was actually in Malaya, and they expected to meet resistance, but they didn't. British troops are unable to reach the beaches in time to stop the invasion. Japanese planes make their first airstrikes from bases in occupied Indochina. Four hours after the first invasion wave, Singapore is bombed. have no idea how many Japanese soldiers have landed. Rumors circulate, numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Making the situation worse, enemy planes not only surprise the British forces, but demoralize them as well, because there are no RAF fighters in the air. The British have less than 200 planes in Malaya, and most of them are obsolete. The few that get off the ground are no match for the highly maneuverable Zero fighters. Only 50 British planes survive the attack. Within 24 hours, the air over Malaya and Singapore is controlled by the Japanese. On December 10th, 97 Japanese planes attack the only two large Navy ships in the Far East. Without RAF protection, the ships are caught in an unavoidable crossfire of torpedoes. The battleship Prince of Wales and the cruiser Repulse are sunk, taking 840 men with them, including Admiral Sir Tom Phillips, recently appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Navy in Singapore. 
the battle would affect the future strategy of war. For the first time in history, battleships underway at sea are sunk from the air. The Japanese have once again rewritten the rules of war at sea. The blow to British morale is tremendous. The one naval force which could have come to the rescue of the British is in ruins. The United States Pacific Fleet is still reeling from the two-hour surprise attack at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, just three days earlier. With the Japanese making more aggressive moves in the Pacific, British reinforcements are increased in Singapore. Albert Adams is a private in the British infantry. We was going to the Middle East, actually, and after, after Pearl Harbor, we diverted to India because we had to be rigged, be uh, rigged out again with the, uh, you know, tropical gear. And we arrived in Singapore, oh, a marvellous place. The climate and everything is perfect. I think that's why most of them survived because of the climate, etc. you know. Actually, I think a lot of it's, we, the reason why we went was actually because uh, most of the civilian population wouldn't leave because they thought it's impregnable. They, you know, the island, they thought, no, I'd never surrender anything like that. So they did trouble. The British soldiers are unconcerned about the Japanese making their way down Malaya. They consider themselves a better trained, better equipped army. With complete air superiority, Japanese ground forces now push down the Malay Peninsula by whatever means possible. Uh, they didn't have a lot of, of gasoline-powered vehicles, so they had done a lot of intelligence work. And you could use bicycles, an unexpected weapon, move along, keep people moving, moving, moving. 